Welcome to the Monday evening class. We are starting our practice tonight doing a pitta reducing practice. So heat reducing. It's extremely warm this week, um, over 100 for the last few days. Not quite that hot today, but close. And so we want to make sure that we are using our yoga practice as a way to bring balance into our life. Yes, it's very important that we do that. I know that yoga is so trendy. It's everywhere, which is wonderful. I'm so glad because no matter what, even if you're doing mediocre yoga, you are getting benefits. But it's even better if you are doing a practice that is appropriate for the time of the year, the time of the day, and your constitution. Because we're evening right now, and it's very hot, we are going to do a practice that helps to pacify the fire element, pitta, and also prepare us for sleep tonight. So we want to sleep well. When it's hot, people don't sleep as well. Okay. So we are going to start out on the floor in a crawling position. And our practice tonight is going to be done with a mantra. The mantra that you are going to use is ease. Okay. Pitta needs ease. Okay. The fire element needs ease. So that is our mantra. That is how we approach our practice tonight. We are not going to bring our pitta intensity into our practice. If it's there, fine. Notice it. Be aware, be aware of it. And then start to chill it out. Start to be playful. Move with ease. You can do it. It's a decision, and we can make that decision. All right, let's do it. Pitta's very good at decisions, by the way. All right, so coming into a crawling position, onto your hands and knees, and you might need a, a block tonight or a blanket, and we're just going to start undulating the spine. So dropping the belly and looking up. And then round you. And then dropping the belly, look up. And round. And then dropping one more time. And round. Now as you round, you're gonna curl your toes under and press into down dog. Drop back down onto your knees. Open up the chest. Drop the belly. And then around again. Draw the navel in. Curl your toes under. Press back down, dog. And remember your mantra is ease. You want to even out your breath. Move it in and out of the nose. Again, drop the belly. Lift. We're going to do that two more times. Draw the navel in, tuck, press back, down dog. And dropping down onto your knees, opening up the chest. Even out your breath, smooth it out. Draw the navel in, curl your toes under, press back, down dog. Good, and then release. From here, Shifting back into prayer. And then we're going to shift forward and round like you're going into that cat again. You're going to round, shift, go all the way down. Bringing your hands up and lifting your legs. So your hands are on the ground, your legs are off the ground. And then release, pull your hands to your side, lower your legs to the ground, push up cobra. And then take it back, down dog. So the postures that help to disperse heat and settle down and bring balance into that fire element, are the rotations and also the postures where you're on your tummy. 
and then release back down extended prayer and then rounding that spine and lowering all the way down arms come up you re releasing your head down lift your legs thighs come up off the ground and then down hands to your chest lower your legs push up bhujanasana and then press back down dog draw your navel in right leg steps forward drop the knee and rotate just rotate reach your arm up see if you could shift your hips forward keep that left hand on the ground and swinging that right arm around you're going to lift your back leg and step back down dog Then stepping forward with the left leg, drop the knee. And again, we rotate. And then lift your arm up. Swing the arm around and step back down dog. Drop down onto your knees and release back into extended prayer. Come forward and lower all the way down. Lift your legs and your arms. Everything lifting, you're on your tummy, stimulating that belly. And then release your legs, hands to the chest. Push up Bhujanasana. Press back, down dog. Right leg's going to step forward, high lunge. And again, we rotate. Reach the arm up. You're in a high lunge, rotate. Take it easy. Remember, ease is our mantra tonight. Swing the arm around. Step back, down dog. Left leg then steps forward. And again, you're staying in the high lunge and rotate. Moving the arm around and step back, down dog. Drop down onto your knees, release back into extended prayer. Shift forward, lower all the way down, and then lift your legs, lift your arms up like your superhero. Hands and back to the chest, lower the legs, push up Bhujanasana, press back, down dog. Right leg steps forward. Warrior two, line up heel to heel here. Reach up and extend. We're gonna be very gradual tonight. Bend that back arm, comes around, lower, go back into the high lunge, reach. Then the arm comes back, step back, down dog. Left leg then steps forward, warrior two. Again. Then the back hand comes around, lift your back heel up, you're in a lunge, right hand is on the ground, left hand reaches up. Swing the arm around, step back, down dog. Then 
then drop down onto your knees, extended prayer. Shift forward, lower all the way down. And then the legs lift and the arms lift, superhero. Bring your hands to your chest, lower your legs. Push up Ujjanasana. Press back, Adha Mukha Savasana. Now I want you to look and see where your feet are. Walk them in a little bit. Right hand is going to reach under and grab the outside of the left calf and you're going to draw that heel down look underneath the left armpit and then release right hand goes on the ground now reach under with the left hand grab that right calf draw the heel down look underneath the right armpit you're shortening that distance between your hands and your legs you guys Draw that right heel down as you pull. Pull, bend that elbow. Pull with that right left hand and pull underneath that right armpit. And then release, good. And from there, we're gonna drop into a crawling position. Right leg extends with the left arm. This is really good for your core and for your back. Reach back, grab your foot, lift, look up. Then release, left hand on the ground, push back, three-legged dog, right leg is up. Step forward, warrior two, open up. Right leg steps forward, warrior two. Bend that knee, open it up. Then that back hand comes around. Left hand goes on the ground, lift your back heel, and again we rotate. Left hand on the ground. Right leg gets forward, left hand on the ground, rotate. Swing the arm around and step back, down dog. Drop down onto your knees. Extend the left leg with the right arm. Hold it. If you can, reach back, grab your foot, lift up. Then curl your toes under on the right leg, push up three-legged dog. Now left leg steps forward, warrior two. Open up, left leg, you got it. Then back hand comes forward, that back hand goes to the ground, lift your back heel up, rotate, high lunge. Swing the arm around, step back, down dog. Drop down onto your knees, release back, extended prayer. And then shifting forward, lower. Lift everything up, upper body, arms, and legs. Like a superhero. 
Then the hands go to your chest, lower the legs, push yourself up, Bhujanasana, Cobra. Press back, down dog. Okay, now look at where your feet are, walk them in a little bit. Draw your heels down and reach under again with your right hand, grab the outside of that left leg, draw that left heel down, emphasize it. Pull with the right arm. So you're pulling, look underneath that left armpit. Keep drawing the heel down, open up between the shoulder blades. When you're pulling, you will open up. So I'm gonna turn so you can see what I'm doing here. So you're pulling. Good, now you're gonna release the right hand. Drop the left knee, turn it to the outside, drop, and then open up. Vashistasana. If you want to do a more advanced version of side plank, then you take that left leg and reach it in front. Okay? Side plank. You're on. Good, then release, down dog, drop down onto your knees, and you're gonna lift up. Right leg steps forward and rotate, reach. Right leg steps forward, rotate. Okay, now the hand that's behind you is gonna come forward, Release down, both hands go on either side of the front leg and straight out both legs, drop your head down. Forward fold. Ease is our mantra tonight. Loosen up. Then step back, plank. Modify to the knees if you need to, otherwise lower. Lift up Cobra and then take it back, down dog. Step your feet in. Grab underneath now with the left hand, grab that cap, draw the heel down, look underneath the armpit. Pull. Keep pulling, open up between the spine and the shoulder blade. Keep drawing your right heel down. Good, then you're gonna release, drop your right knee. Open it up so you can move it to the side. Vashistasana. Side plank, bear, um, it's a modified version, variation. Or you can take this leg and reach it right in front. That is another version. Push your hips up, do not sag, push up. Then swing the arm around, press back down dog, drop down onto your knees, lift up. Now your left leg goes forward, rotate and extend that arm. Look over the shoulder. Then that back hand comes forward, both hands on either side of the front leg, lift, straighten the leg, forward fold. And you can use a block here. Relax your head. Try to straighten that front leg as much as you can. I know it's hard, but you wanna to try to do that. Relax your head, relax your head. Good. 
good. And then from there, step back, down dog. Shift forward, plank. Lower, lift. And then take it back into child's pose. So with child's pose, your hands go to your side. Big toes together, open up the knees and release back. Relax. Okay, so for the next part of the class, you will need either a block or a blanket. We're gonna press back into down dog. Right leg comes forward and we're taking it into pigeon. And I do want you to have the knee to the side beyond the hip. So here's one of the things that happens in this pose. So I'm gonna show you. People take their knee straight ahead. That's not it. Your knees should be to the side and your heel should be up, lined up with the knee as much as you can. It's fine to have your heel further back into the groin, but that is a modification, okay? And if that's easy for you, then you need to be pulling that heel up, okay? Challenge yourself. You can do it without breaking a sweat okay now either with a block or a blanket you can place it underneath the right glutes like that that's with a block or you can use a blanket blankets are kind of nice because then they give you lots of different variations you can go lower you can go higher and then we're in pigeon to make pigeon even deeper, you want to curl the extended leg, toes under, and then reach it leg back even further. Take it back. That's just taking it a little further deeper into the pose. It's going to drop the pelvis down, and you want to release the left hip down. Good. Now watch what we're doing. We're on our hands. We're going to walk over towards the knee. Rotate. Good. And then we go forward and lower. You can use a block here if you need to. If you can flatten out, maybe take the block or the blanket out, drop down deeper. Open up the pelvis, let it release. Okay, now you're gonna take your weight to the right sit bone. You're, you're gonna be turning your back possibly to the camera, it's fine. You're only gonna be here for a little bit. If you turn, drop both sit bones down, pull your right heel in. Now, you might need a blanket again to sit on both sit bones. 
and then reach over to the left leg. Good, and then we turn to the right again. You're gonna turn and face forward, step back, down dog. Left leg now comes forward, and you're gonna take it right into pigeon. Modify, use a blanket if you need it. And again, the knee is gonna go beyond the hip. See, stay up on your hands, you guys. Don't drop down onto your elbows yet. Okay, so to make this deeper, pull the heel up, pull it up, or curl your toes under on the extended leg and take that leg further back. Drop the right hip now, drop it. Drop it. And now you're on your hands and you're gonna rotate over the left knee. Look over the shoulder. And then release down onto your forearms. So now we release down. And if you can, see if you can take out your blanket, maybe drop a little deeper into that pigeon. Good, then we're lifting up. And now we're gonna rotate so that our right leg extends. So on the camera, it looks like it's my left leg, but it's my right leg. It's just the camera turns me. Left heel pulls in and now you reach out to the extended leg and reach. Reach out for the extended leg. I don't care what leg it is, whatever your extended leg is, reach. Good, and then from there, come out of it, and we're gonna just take it right onto our backs. Find your heels, pull up into bridge. Crack the knees in line with the front of the hip bone. This is the front of the hip, not the outside, the front. That is where your knees are gonna line up, right there with the front of the hip. Then lift your right leg straight up. Take that leg on top of the left, lower. Draw the left knee in, grab behind the hamstring. Good, and then you're gonna actively press the right knee away as the left knee draws in towards you. Release your glutes. Press into the sacrum. That press into the sacrum to bring some lumbar curve back, and that'll deepen your stretch as well. Good. Then release the left foot onto the ground. Right leg goes over the left, and if you can, wrap your toes on the right leg underneath the left calf or ankle. Open up your arms, 
shift your hips to the right just slightly, then drop your legs down to the left. So it is a deep rotation. So you might need a block, you might need a blanket to support those knees, no problem. And look to the right side. Those legs are intertwined. Slowly coming out of that, release. Find your heels again, push back up into bridge. Track your knees in line with the front of the hip bone. Lift. Then the left leg reaches straight up. Take that left leg, place it on top of the right, lower the pelvis, draw the right knee in, interlace your fingers behind the hamstring, actively push the left knee away as you draw the right knee in, activate the back of the pelvis, the sacrum, bring some lumbar curve back, that will deepen your stretch. Good, and then releasing the right leg to the ground. Foot goes on the ground, left leg goes over. If you can, wrap the left foot around that calf or ankle. Shift your hips now slightly to the left. Open up your arms and drop your legs now to the right. And again, if you want to, you can use a blanket or a block. Give a little support to your knees. I need that on this side a little more than on the other side. There, and look to the left. So remember all these rotations are helping to squeeze our internal organs, massage the internal organs. And that is a way of helping to release tension, stagnation, excess heat, pressure. And you wanna further enhance your practice by allowing yourself to move through the practice with that ease. There's comfort there. We're trying to help relieve the pressure, relieve the stress. Stretching alone does that. But when you do yoga, you know, you're working with the subtle forces it's called the values. You're opening up all the channels throughout the whole body. So the energy channels open up. And when we allow for natural flow, we feel better any kind of pressure or stress that we might have been holding in the body now can release. We've kind of allowed it to squeeze out, release out naturally by just moving our body. Good. And then from there, we're releasing. And then legs lift straight up. You're going to take your arms right out to the side. You're either going to bend your knees and drop your legs to the right with bent knees, 
or you keep the legs extended and you go to the right. And then hold it there. And if you need to go back to bending, that's fine. Lift the legs up, extend, or keep the legs bent and go to the left. See if you could extend those legs. And then bend those knees, come back up, and then extend again or keep them bent. Lower, lift back up, bent knees are straight and lower to the left. And come back up. Good, and then we lower and lift the upper body up, hold. Extend your arms if you can. Boat pose. Legs come back up with momentum, lower and lift. And go right into a forward fold. And then lifting up, right leg goes over the left, foot flat on the floor, lifting up tall and twist. Go over the right shoulder, look behind you. And then release both legs, extend again, forward fold. Ease. Come back up. Left leg comes up and goes over. The extended leg, foot flat on the floor, lift up tall with your torso, so no slouching, lift, rotate. Look over the left shoulder. And then releasing that leg back out, lowering again. And one of the things to be aware of when you're dealing with lots of heat, heat in the environment, heat in the body, you want to stay away from a lot of the inversions, the handstands, shoulder stand. They will aggravate pitta. They will aggravate heat. Forward fold, soothing, softening, and releasing. Relax the breath, relax the body. All right, and then from there, taking it onto your back, doing another bridge. Just to release your, your pelvis, neutralize it, and then down and set yourself up for Shavasana. I like to take a bolster 
or roll up my blanket right underneath my knees. And then lowering palms up in a receiving position, shoulder blades underneath you. Cover your eyes. Remember, we want to soothe the eyes. Eyes are connected to the fire element. It's where you bring in light. That makes sense. So cover your eyes, pacify the eyes, pacify that fire element, pacify the heat. Let your breath relax, let go. And let your body soften into the floor, into the ground. And feel the coolness of the ground beneath you. The ground is not feeling so cool. I want you to imagine that it is. Imagine what it would feel like to lay in cool grass. Lay on the cool earth. And again, imagine that you're bringing ease into the body with a gentle, slow, natural moving breath. Not shaping the breath, you're just allowing the breath to move naturally your own rhythm. But each breath brings in ease. And we'll continue to relax, continue to soften that body. Remember, relaxation happens in layers. You want to give your body an opportunity to soften, to continue to soften and actually relax. And you do that by bringing the body into stillness for a while. You just hold yourself there. And with these evening practices, if you are a vata or a pitta, or you're dealing with high vata, high pitta, you want to have a longer shavasana. They need it. They need more rest. Pitta and vata gets depleted. Remember, vata is the air, ether elements. Pitta is fire. Tiny bit of water, mostly fire. Each breath slowing down, softening, relaxing. Being still, being silent, not stimulating, letting the body unwind from all the stimulation. Reset.
Begin to deepen your breath. And gently allow some movement into your fingers and toes. And slowly roll to your right side, rest. Rest on the right side. So remember when you roll to the right side, that's gonna promote rest. And uh, for high pitta, for lots of heat, that is the side you wanna roll to. Okay. And then gently bringing yourself up to a comfortable seated position. We're gonna do a couple of cooling breaths as a reminder. This is another little thing that you can put in your toolbox. So you're gonna inhale with a curled tongue, inhaling through the mouth. Close your mouth and swallow. Then exhale out of your mouth. Do that again, curl your tongue, inhale. Bend, swallow that breath. Exhale out of your mouth. So I want you to notice when your tongue is curled, you are drawing in cool air by swallowing it. You are helping to cool down the digestion. So when there's hot temperatures, it can start to aggravate heat in digestion as well. So we're cooling that down. So use that as a way to cool your body down. Hands come together, connecting your thumbs to your heart. Close your eyes for one more moment. Integrate into that silence, into that stillness. Let it give you peace. Let it give you balance. And may you have a wonderful evening. Namaste. Good job. <laughs>